Hey folks, Jeff Salzman here and welcome to The Daily Evolver. My guest today is Diane Musho Hamilton, who has been on the front lines of the diversity, equity, and inclusion movement for over two decades, starting as a diversity trainer in the Utah Supreme Court. Diane is a transmitted Zen teacher in the white plum tradition and a highly respected integral teacher. She's also been my dear friend and comrade for over 20 years. Diane's specialty is working with groups under stress, of which there is no shortage when it comes to DEI initiatives. She's a master at metabolizing group energies and emotions and making space for people to show up in a way that brings forth the best of everybody. We start our conversation by looking at the integral movement in general and what it uniquely brings to the understanding of the DEI movement and to navigating it more fruitfully. Thank you for listening. Here's my conversation with Diane Lucio Hamilton. The way that I think we should talk about it is there's this kind of thing online about how almost like the integral enterprise has kind of dissolved and the integral culture has kind of dispersed or come apart. And we hear this all the time. And I think it would be fun for you and I to riff on where, what we think the state of the integral culture is. And then I can say, for me, it's just completely informed everything that I'm doing, you know? So for example, you know, post George Floyd uh, with all the uh, issues related to race and gender and uh, sexual orientation, all of that, it's like, Ken has just given us a map and a, and a capacity for being able to affirm everything that is great about pluralism and all the, you know, the goodness that really is coming from it. And at the same time, because of the both and that's built into integral understanding, we can find our way through it in ways that other people can't. Yeah. So I'd love to kind of dispel this notion that the integral enterprise has somehow reached a dead end. Yeah. No, me too. Actually, it's funny that you should say this because I'm feeling a new energy. Yeah, in me too. Integral. Are you good? And, yes, yeah. and even in the you know Wilberian um, lineage, if you uh -huh. will, okay, uh, good. that um, you know the explanatory power mm -hmm. of evolutionary thinking, the idea of consciousness and cultures are evolving, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, you know the, the the insight into that, yeah, really helps us to understand our moment. Yeah. Exactly. In history. Exactly. Yeah. So and, I, I kind of wouldn't mind just starting with that big critique yeah. because I know the meta people are sort of, you know, pronouncing rest in peace across the integral movement, yeah. you know, as are other people. I mean, I think I kind of get the sense that they yeah. just feel like it's done, you know, and it's just not done. It's no. psychoactive and it continues to be super potent. Yeah. No, totally. it may it may not have a center the way it did when Ken was really at the helm, but right. it's it's in the drinking water. Yeah. You know? No, it's the um, and yeah, the fact that the you're feeling inspired itself. is a really nice place for us to start. And then I can talk about what's happening in the nonprofit world and how yeah. difficult it is to navigate this time and how important it is. On the one hand, the fact that these social justice issues, this sort of next wave of the civil rights movement, has made it into the mainstream is partly due to the fact that people are actually more at a pluralistic level. Yeah, There's way, totally. way more green in culture. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So I think that's an interesting well, let's start segue there. in, yeah. you know, because I'd actually like to hear what you think about the state, if you will, of kind <clears throat> of the integral enterprise, meaning both integral theory and the integral culture. Yeah. Well, let me just some thoughts on, you know, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is what we're talking about here, and the integral version of that. Okay, sure. And, um, you know, the basic idea is there are three worldviews in contention, traditionalism, God, country, ethnocentric, you know, mm -hmm. racist by the other two stages, uh, lights. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that, that group. There's mm -hmm. the modernists, the secular, scientific. They wanted and did in the civil mm -hmm. rights movement and civil rights act. Uh, demolish all official barriers mm -hmm. to racial integration. Yeah, in terms of mainly in terms of the law. Yeah, yeah in terms of law and restaurants mm -hmm. and you know all yeah. of that good stuff. Official mm -hmm. business. Yeah. 
And um, and the idea there is meritocracy, colorblind. Uh, Equality. Fair enough. Yeah. Equality of opportunity. Yeah. And then green postmodernity comes online and says, well, you know, uh, That's you want well an equal playing field now? Yeah. <laughs> After yeah. 200 years of, you know. Yeah. Well, and and also, yeah, you we can pass all the laws that we want to, but then we we have to have a way to address the really deep hidden yeah. bias within all the people yeah. in those court systems, in those police forces, in those educational centers. Just the the inherent bias, even though in the exteriors we've done something to actually try to create equality, within the interiors there's deep and sustained biases that are still at work. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so we want to work to correct that and to mm -hmm. set right the karmas of history. Yeah. And if so, for for that worldview, and these worldviews are they're different. You know, they intermingle, but they're different. They're it, 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 they're in contention because evolution likes contention. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. here we are yeah. fighting this. Yeah. And um, you know, that is the gift that that sensitivity to people who have been left behind, put in the shadows. Um, and, and oppressed, in our hearts and minds, yeah, not so absolutely. much in the laws. Yeah, uh, that there has to be a correction that is affirmative, that recenters our attention, mm -hmm. that it has perhaps reparations. Mm -hmm. Certainly, um, uh, uh, um, what's the word for it? Uh, kind of a redemption, mm -hmm. you know, sort of almost a spiritual acknowledgement of you know history and how it's the, they're still playing out we have a subculture mm -hmm. of african american people and other cultures other colors too but there is a subculture that has been uh you know left behind mm -hmm. in terms of income in terms of net worth in terms of education all sorts of um, um, social metrics mm -hmm. so that requires an affirmative correction. And that's very ner nervous making to, ma to modernity, mm -hmm. who wants it, you know, still has this, um, you know, ethic of uh, equality of opportunity, of merit, and because it, because it privileges empiricism in the right hand quadrants. Whereas postmodernism is very concerned with subjectivity, with interpretation, with people's subjective experience. And so yes. the issues related to uh, not just equal access, but to, you know, the relationship of power to privilege, what marginalization is, implicit bias, as I already said, you know, those kinds of those that all that language, including white supremacy, patriarchy, intersectionality, yes. white fragility, it all comes into the language in a very new and different way than it did in the civil rights movement, which was more a modernist civil rights movement. Yeah. Is that fair? Totally. Yeah. So here we are. So here we are. And, um, you know, every stage has its fanatics. Mm -hmm. Every stage has its great gifts mm -hmm. and also its contractions. And it has its, you know, its it truth has claims. Its, every every stage. Yeah, every... yeah, absolutely. So here we are in... Um, where green postmodern progressive culture has really, in terms of the culture, I mean, we could argue about the politics, right. but in terms of culture, it's really, there's a flor this is a fluorescent green time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we're seeing is that there's a healthy green and there's a mean green. Mm -hmm. And in diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, companies, uh, you know, this is big industry, right? Yeah. Sure. And yeah. lots of funding. You know, everybody wants to to be in on it, and it's because it's up. It's what's next in the evolution of our culture, mm -hmm. and um, and it's dicey. Yeah, so it's super dicey. Here you are, a white woman, uh, <laughs> you know, going into this lion's den, and offering something new. I think honestly, and 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 I think it's the integral. It's the it's the post progressive, if you will, or post-green, um, mm -hmm. post-postmodern, that includes the best of the green sensitivity and, you know, wanting to right the wrongs of history. It mm -hmm. also includes meritocracy and colorblindness and has mm -hmm. that as, as sort of a foundation. And it also includes just the juice of traditionalism where you know who your people are. 
and you'll yeah. love them. You'll love yeah. them extra. Yeah. 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 So something like that, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, part of, I think what we're, what we've been seeing happen since the post George Floyd is that, uh, I think that the center gravity of the culture is changing. So you and I, and many of the people who'll be listening to this call have had a tremendous, you might say we've had, uh, you know, we've experienced the, you know, raw power stage of development. We were culturated into tradition through our religions and our early upbringing. We also experienced modernism in our education. And then probably for a lot of us, we also had a really kind of, deep immersion in in what you're talking about as postmodern culture of pluralism meaning that you know there's the these waves of pluralism so there's the therapeutic wave you know which has to do with healing with looking at our wounding and our upbringing and learning how to be in the body and somatics are really deeply emphasized and uh you know and that's where kind of the issue within the more public sphere of microaggressions and uh getting injured and creating safe spaces there's a way that the therapeutic containers kind of drift over into the the yeah. public containers um and then you know just that to be aware of our uh, of the 400 years of colonialism to be aware of the way in which the the male mind you could say the patriarchy has sort of dominated the way we proceed in culture there are lots of arguments that create more nuance than that but nonetheless and so we, you and I've been educated in these things and we understand certainly the history of racism and the marginalization of LGBTQ, um, et cetera. And, and not to mention just other domains, you know, I live in, in Utah where there's a re very powerful religious majority. So there's a lot of religious oppression here, you know, so th that's part of our upbringing. When I'm in, when I'm in trainings, I, I can kind of swim in that territory because I, I was in a way, I, I mean, I've been an activist. I've been a diversity trainer. I've, been, I've, when I was working for the judiciary, I was facilitated the racial and ethnic fairness task force 20 years ago. People think this is the first time all this has been happening, but it's been happening all along, but the center of gravity has changed. That's one of the reasons why it's, and that's a good thing. That's an excellent thing. But we also know that green these values become ideology and then cancel culture results and the inability to people to express their opinions. And, uh, you know, these, they're kind of certain kinds of back eddies and traps that get set by an over attachment to these. So for example, there's an article in the Atlantic about a black professor who is, it teaches anti-racism and is literally pushed out of his ability to be a professor um, because there are certain now there's another wave in terms of, you know, anti-racism and the emphasis on blackness where he can't pass the purity test. You know, what he's doing is not pure enough. You know, it's not uh, supportive enough. It, like he literally is accused of anti-blackness. So we see that there's a way in which these back eddies get created. Like there's no way out of black, anti-blackness. Even a black professor who teaches anti-racism is accused of anti-blackness. And so all of us have that experience of being in situations in which all these really important values and assertions all of a sudden lead to their opposite. And we end up with circular firing squads. We end up with purity tests that none of us can pass. We end up in situations where no one can lead because anybody who touches authority or power is corrupt. Anybody who, who breathes that they have any sense of privilege is no longer allowed leadership. And so in our world, we'll, what you just got done saying is that integral actually gives us a way through those dilemmas. Yeah. And that's really my experience is that there is something in the integral medicine, if you will, that helps us out of these double binds that we find ourselves in. Because we want to affirm these values, but we don't want to get stuck in the ideology such that nobody can lead our organizations, which there's another article in The Intercept yep. about the way in which the nonprofit world is literally not functioning right now, like not functioning yep. because of this, you know, that all of the questions about equality and about equity and about fairness and about 
are, are being turned on the leaders of these organizations. It's no longer going outward towards police or government or whatever it is. And it's literally within the nonprofit world. Nobody can lead. Yeah. So that's a problem. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's a, a problem that, um, I, I, again, I think integral uh, helps us find our way through. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that happen is that, you know, postmodernity comes online, particularly after World War II, as a critique of all of the ideologies of previous history. Yeah. So the right. idea that science is going to save us, the idea yeah. of our religion or our people are going to mm -hmm. somehow uh, be triumphant, that's all deconstructed with uh, postmodernity. This is huge progress that yeah. we would deconstruct these hierarchies. Um, what the, the the problem is is that there it's it deconstructs into oblivion. Yeah. Uh, and the only thing that's left in defund, free, deconstruct, decolonize, de. Yes. De, 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 de. The only thing that's left is you see history is just one big power struggle. So yeah. power is everything. So power becomes something mm -hmm. that you can't touch, as yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the companies and nonprofits, particularly, and mm -hmm. academia and yeah, uh, public academia, organizations, particularly, yeah, yeah governments—they're they're frozen, struggling. Yeah, they're frozen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they and you know, if you're running a company, you want to find a way where, you know, it's like we talk about diversity. The in a, in a sense, what the what integral brings to diversity is that we can create a container that has different worldviews. Exactly. Now, now not there just will be different a races there, and ages the, and sexes, but different worldviews can coexist. Right. Wow. Right. Now, what 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 will happen and does happen in my world, of course, is that the idea that that integral the the integral map, integral theory. Is a is a conceptual map, and therefore it's abstract, it's Western, yeah. it's masculine. Therefore, it has no value. You know, like it, it can be, the theory and the practices really can be critiqued as you know, kind of coming from the poison plant itself. But you know, my my own way of working with all this is just to be as real as possible in the moment when I'm working with people yeah. and, and try to really engage people around what is our real intention. We got to be clear about what it is because if what we're here to do is immobilize each other and shame each other, that can happen. But if what we're here to do is to learn how to work together in a way where these different subjective realities can have a place and people can have a voice and we can still be, be productive and energetic and flow together, then that can really happen. But sometimes, you know, you have to have it out a little bit. I remember in a workshop that I was doing that was focused on these issues and we had a really uh, very diverse um, group and I'm older. And as you said, I'm white. So the fact, I mean, okay, there's white men, but there's older white women. <laughs> and I think we might be hated more. You know, we have names, Karen. Yeah. I think we were Becky before that. Uh -huh. But like this idea that there's something about having proximity to power and and always having benefited from it, never differentiated from it, but never had to take responsibility for it. Like we're more creepy by far than you guys are. You know? <laughs> so just to be clear about that. So I said in this group of people, I said like, I said, listen, I know that there isn't, there's nobody, including a white male that you would rather less learn from right now than me. So let's just get that out <laughs> on the table. Yeah, right on. I said, Karen, right here, yeah, you know. Right. And later that evening, um, this, uh, this really whip smart 27 year old black guy from DC, you know, just, tremendous privilege to work with him. I mean, it's, he was just, he's so charismatic and so sharp. And he says to me, you know, he's laughing. He's been drinking a little. He says to me, you know, that's the, when you said that, that's the first time I started listening to you. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And then he, and then he kind of kept going. He was a little drunk. So he kept going. He kept going on a little too long. <laughs> no, I finally I said to him, Hey, you know, what's great though is I don't care if you listen to me, you know, yeah. I don't give a shit. Like yeah. we'll either work it out together. We won't, but if you don't like me, that's, fine with me yeah 
No, wow. we either will or we won't. Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah, no, well, that's part of your magic, Di, is your fearlessness and your ability. <laughs> I mean, I'm under the desk at this point. You know, I, <laughs> I know. And there you are. I mean, I've done many. How many workshops have we done together? I know, so and, many. And you bring things to a painful point sometimes. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, and yeah, because we we have to we have to get real. Like, what are we really here to do? Yeah. And if we're really here to work on these issues, let's work on them. You know. And if we're really here to hate each other, then let's let's be honest about that. You yeah. know. Let's be honest that we're hating on each other. And then I'll say, you guys, if you're here to hate on each other, I'm peace out. You know, because that's not really what I'm going to do. Right on. So describe for everybody here what it is you do. You know, what are the context you're 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 training facilitators mm -hmm. in this integral approach? Right. Um, and you do indeed go into companies and work with people. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you do some um, I mean, you'll stay with me here in my place and, you know, give me reports after <laughs> five or six hours of these nonprofits. It's like oh, my hair's on end. Yeah. You know, God bless well, you. I mean, I, I, I'm a facilitator. I facilitate conversation. That's what I do. I, I, I'm not a consultant. I've told people, you know, I wasn't trained in organizational development. What I can do is I can help you have a conversation that's hard for you to have. Yeah. That's what I'm really good at. And so I deal with a lot of conflict. And, and throughout the course of my career, issues related to everything we're talking about have been always, they always come to the fore. So one has to be able to to work with them and deal with them. And of course, it depends on what the intention of the gathering is. In some ways, the point that you're making is that in some ways, the for-profit entities have it better because they've got to make it work because they're driven by what, by their metrics. And so if, you know, if the, the, the initiatives to create more equity, more fairness, to distribute resources, to acknowledge difference, to support people who haven't, traditionally been able to be in leadership, you know, all those initiatives, which are super healthy and good. If they're not helping you still deliver, they're going to, they're not, the for-profit entities are not going to succumb, but the nonprofit entities will. And that's why we, we particularly need to learn how to deal with this because the, you know, the, these have, they have such great missions and right now they're immobilized, a lot of them. Yeah. So how do, what do I do? Yeah. So I, I just, what I do is, I'm I'm really about um, good human relations, and I'm really about uh, energy. I'm about really creating environments in which people can feel free and their and energy can flow. And I think you know my Zen training really comes in to it for me because I'm not so much about the I ideology. I'm about what's actually happening right now. How do we get to the goal that we have together? What we say we break down untie knots and break down barriers, you know, what are, what are the barriers just flowing and working in a way that is really nurturing and fulfilling. And so I, I will part ways with some of the, um, some of the orthodoxies, if you will, of, of kind of traditional DEI. Cause for me, it's all about creating the healthiest learning environments we can, because when people struggle too much, they stop learning. When people feel blamed and shamed and, and people are angry and accusatory, we stop learning. We yeah. do not learn when we're in those states. When we're in a, a state of fight or flight, when adrenaline is being dripped and cortisol is in the bloodstream and people can be saying whatever they want, but what I can tell you, because you know this because of the neurophysiology, is that it just literally cuts off access to cognition. Like we can listen and hear, but we're not learning. You know, yeah. we're basically looking for the exit. We're basically, uh, you know, defending ourselves. And so sometimes, for instance, the critique that you you can't tone police, you can't tell people that they can't be angry or they can't be this or that. I take issue with that. I'm like, actually, if we want, if this is a learning environment, we've got to do that because we can work with a certain amount of aggression in the room and anger. I, and I'll totally, as a conflict resolution person, allow it. But I help people be with it, help them breathe, help them stay present, help them understand how much somebody cares. And that's why they're saying it this way. So let's just take a minute and see if we can handle this. Like, you know, I, Integral helps us be more sophisticated about how people grow and change. 
You know, you can't just yell at everybody. People won't, people won't learn. They don't learn. They just go away mad. You know? Now, do you liter- literally say this? Yeah, to- yeah, I'll say, yeah. you know what? What you're saying is super important, and I can tell oh, you have how an much- angry person. Yeah, they're playing, pissed. You know, okay. Yeah, 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 they're pissed. And they're pissed about this and that. They, they're pissed, you know. I mean, I, I have so many different images and memories flooding into my, you know, different kinds of things that I've worked on. But let's just say there's somebody's really mad in the room, you know, then what I want to do is quickly work with, helping them supporting their care and their passion and that they wouldn't be saying it if it didn't matter. And the way they're saying it, I'm afraid people aren't going to be able to hear them. Is there something I can do to help you? Or conversely, can you guys give me five minutes and let him yell a little? Let's just hear this out. Let's do some breathing and just hear what message can we hear in this? Well, we feel a lot of energy. That's for sure. You know, so I do a lot of work energetically with people as you know you're yeah. you're shaking your... no you're you're scaring me again <laughs> i know i mean i, know. I you know i know and i like to be playful i like to play yeah. with people i like to tease people yeah you know i love people all kinds of people even yeah. people who are pissed you know because yeah. i know what that's like i get i'm so self-righteous you know yeah right on so i, I think i assume that works most of the time yeah it does. It, you, I mean, you, people will stay with you. I mean, I've seen you do it, so I yeah. know it works. Yeah, uh, we've I had some see. great conversations. I mean, I, what, the very best conversations I've ever had involving issues related to trans people or in the integral world. They're the most mm-hmm. open, the most tolerant, the most exploratory, the most merciful. We've had such good conversations. It's so true. Haven't found that to be true in other places at all. Yeah. There's so much anxiety and so much. Uh, it's just anxiety yeah. coming out in all different ways, you know, but the best conversations I ever have are in groups of integralists. Yeah. You know, no, that's true. And those are the conversations I've been in with you. Yeah. But there you also go into the civilian world, you know, mm-hmm. the non integral world. Yeah. And you've got people who are, um, you know, angry from all which ways mm-hmm. um, yeah. and shut down. Yeah. And you can manage, I mean, actually, maybe this is an opportunity to talk about what you actually are doing in terms of training other facilitators. I mean, oh, sure. what are the skills? Sure. Yeah. yeah well, I, new, I, I think it's really a new approach to DEI. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a transcend and include, yeah. you know, in the sense that, uh, so I did a, I, a lot of your listeners may know that I did, worked with uh a colleague on a program called Integral Facilitator, which I did for seven years. And then uh, my partner and I had different, uh, what what would I say, like just different visions for how to move the program. And at that point, I decided I didn't, I wanted to kind of go my own way and continue to work with sort of seeker professionals. I mean, that's the category of people that I feel like I love to train. People who are in the world, they're accomplished, they're competent, and they're seekers. They're spiritual seekers. They're peacemakers, they're heart-filled folks, you know, that's the people who will be listening to your call. Yeah. Um, and so the the integral map has just given me a way to really create a really nice territory for the training. So I will work with people on understanding what quadrants are, what levels and worldviews are, help people with lines in de- of development, certainly types. And, and then we do a lot of emotional and somatic work. And so it, it's a very... Uh, our training is transformational. I mean, that's what we learned from Ken. We learned about, uh, you know, both waking up and growing up. And so we need a little bit of both. We need people to understand awareness and we need people to understand our habits and our ways of being. Can We can grow and change. And that our proposition in the training is that to be a good facilitator means to be really in touch with who, with yourself. Yeah. Like wow. you can learn all the skills really? you want. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the gold right there is if wow. you're aware and awake of what's happening for you, you can pretty well guess what's happening for others. And then you just work with that. Well, for heaven's sakes. Yeah. I don't know why I have to wait 68 years to, to know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so that's the, fantastic, Di. So I rebranded it. It was the Integral Facilitator, which is a big tip of the hat to Ken. And I call this one the Real Life Facilitator because the Integral is in life. So life is for leadership, 
for integral for facilitation and for energy for working with life force. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm I I've I've done two of this new brand and uh-huh. starting the next one in November. It's a seven month program and you know of course the integral crowd is the best crowd to train because they're so into it. They'll just yeah. drink it, eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You totally. Know? Yeah. And then, you know, hopefully have a, a, a set of skills that they could take to the market. Yeah, exactly. Again, because people people industry. need help. Yeah. You right now, you know, it's it's harrowing in the States. I mean, I, I don't think it's as harrowing in other places. I think it's still easier to work in Europe and Latin America and possibly, I mean, not in Vancouver, but in Canada generally, maybe. But, you know, in the U.S., if you're if you're at all working in liberal leaning situations it's it's challenging you've got to be able to know your know your way around this this yeah. territory yeah you know? yeah so yeah. how is it structured we have we're, we're talking seven months how mm-hmm. often do people get together how many people are we talking about is it physical it's is small it... because i like to work with people individually so 24 is my target number mm-hmm. it could go larger than that but 24 is the one and um, basically, we have three in-person seminars, one in October, one in February, one in May. And then uh, we have individual coaching so that everybody has an individual, co- individual coach. And uh, uh, my integral colleagues, Rob McNamara, Cindy Lugolin, and Gabe Wilson are the coaches. And so they help people really clarify and identify the ways they want to grow and then they support them in really keeping their eye on that ball individually where i'm more in charge of helping them start to understand how to work in groups how do you pay attention to groups what do you notice about the energy is it high is it low is it coherent is it fragmented what devices could be used when when is that individuation exciting when is coherence necessary so i'm really working with the group vibe and that's really what I'm teaching people is how to translate their experience into working with this energetic phenomenon of the group, you know, because yeah. the group is a thing. It's a, a whole on kind of yeah. a social home. Social whole on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you have done it. Well, you've been doing it for quite some time. Yeah. And nine, under 10 the, years. Under now. the, yeah. Under the mm-hmm. new brand uh, for a couple mm-hmm. of years. Uh How's it going? I mean, how 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 are the graduates? Uh, you, you in touch with how they're are they they work in it? Are they succeeding? What's going on? Well, you know, interestingly enough, I I think so. I mean, across the board, the most consistent f- piece of feedback I get from them is how much more willing to be themselves they are, and how much more willing they are to take risks and experiment. Yeah, which is fantastic. Though to me, that's like total home run the only problem is they experience a few more failures too (laughs) so there was a woman in the last seminar that i did where she was just talking about like you know i'm just expending a lot of social capital like practicing and it's not really going that well yet you know and that and my whole thing is be yourself but stay in relationship to the feedback you got to stay really really close to the feedback and adjust 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 until you hit the right note you know so yeah. So I would say I'd I'd say they're doing great, and I also think that uh, they grew, and then probably some contract and go back a little bit. But there's, you know, there is this. Everybody wants a little more freedom when we're working together. Good. More yeah. joy, more yes. flow. Yes. We all do more pleasure. Yeah. The default being to be yourself, to see what's going on, to receive feedback, to experiment. Mm-hmm. It have some courage, right? Have some courage. Take some. Yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What sort of be afraid of? The worst that can happen. <laughs> what you're going to get? What you're going to cancel? <laughs> <laughs> I better yeah. not get canceled after this call. <laughs> yeah, I, f- I feel like even the culture is moving through the fear of cancellation. I think so. We're getting yeah. there. You know, I, I I care less about uh, being called names than I used to. And camps are breaking down. The, yeah. That extreme polarity is tough. That's been hard on everybody. It has. I hope we can find our way through that. Yeah, and there, it's still there's still plenty of it. Uh, in oh, some yeah. ways, it's it's still the, the breakfast, lunch, and dinner of the mass culture. Yeah. But there's an yeah. emerging culture that even the idea of steel man. I don't remember hearing that three years ago. What's steel the man? Idea, steel. Well, there you go. 
Yeah. Uh, it's it's the opposite of straw man. So straw oh. man's where you talk about your opponents, all their faults and all their hypocrisies and all the yeah. flaws in their you know thinking. Right. right. Steel man is where you do the opposite. Oh wow! So you you find your political opponent or opponent uh-huh. in some uh, arena, and make their case for them. Uh huh. This is a practice. It's like a polarity flip. Yeah, exactly. Very and good. So you you describe them in the best possible ways. Uh, look at for their good faith. Look uh-huh. for what they get right, and that's a thing now. Wow, Imagine. that's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, that's emergent. Yeah, you see it on Twitter. You see, you know, it's a word. It's very cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. What I well, you know, I want to teach people some better skills. Like I want to teach them. You know, I take issue with the you know, with white fragility in a way, you know, in the sense that uh, I don't, I absolutely support the idea that, you know, when white people refuse to have conversations or let their feelings get the best of them and leave the room or do whatever, that's got to be just, that's like not okay. On the other hand, people need to feel. Mm -hmm. So in a room, if a white person is feeling and having a hard time being in the conversation, I just want them to sit and feel really fully and cry all they want and let somebody else have the conversation for a minute because whatever's going on there is a change. I mean, that crying, there's nothing that readjusts our psyche more than it getting super wet, you know? So the idea that we shouldn't cry is just, that needs not to be misunderstood, you know? And how we work with pain, like if we're going to talk about the suffering that people have gone through, how, how do we create a container where we can be present to it? People can hear and their hearts can deepen and become even more available as opposed to uh, freezing and becoming again more immobilized, you know? And sometimes you have, you have people, need, I mean, exploring power generally. People are wielding power all the time in these conversations, acting like they're not, you know? It's all about power. People's personal motives are often really mixed up with their social agendas you know and so that can be tricky depending on what's going on a lot of times people are there's a you know we use the evolutionary frame there are people new to the conversation people who are experienced and people who are old pros you know you're not talking to the same group of people it really depends no shadow work is really important in all of this you know dealing with collective issues versus individual issues the recognition of pain and suffering in what way you know there's just all kinds of things that we can work with and just simply teaching people how to listen in a really kind way and then how to respond authentically. Mm -hmm. So it's good stuff, I think. It is good stuff, yeah. Yeah. And I will say, having worked with hundreds of facilitators, I've never seen anybody at your level. I mean, (gasps) you just, yeah. um, It's just because I'm willing to be creamed. (laughs) You are. I think it may be as simple as that, Di. You're willing to be creamed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But it's... um, it's pretty powerful. And, you know, it's the argument for courage, you yeah, know, to, and is. love and truth, yes. you know, yeah. all of those, these yeah. big three. Yeah, well. yeah absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. But courage. And, and, and to, just taking a stand for that, we can learn how to treat each other. Yeah. The whole point is that we haven't, you know, everybody's been screwing each other over for so long throughout our evolutionary history. We're trying to grow up. Yeah. And that is the wake, wake up and grow up. Sensibility. Is yeah. that we're friends to all. Yeah. You know, the absolutely. universal donor. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so yeah. Wow. So, what else should we know about what you're doing? And well, I think that's plenty. Things. I mean, thank you so much for yeah. for being interested. I, I do think that, you know, I sometimes hear people out on the internet and whatnot talk about kind of the, the end of the integral enterprise or that it's over or whatever. And, and I just really beg to differ. I mean, I feel like it's going, it's psychoactive and it's alive and well. You yeah. know, it may be that we're not hosting integral seminars the way we were. And the Europeans are still really doing a great job with the conferences. And yeah. mm-hmm. and that really fun 10 years we got to, or however long it was, we got to play together. It was just so incredible. It was like just the fragrance of, yes. of a certain kind of evolutionary spiritual practice. It was so wonderful. But I just think that the the psychoactive properties are alive and well, and and it's making a huge difference to my work. Yeah. And you were saying that you feel kind of inspired right now too, right? Yeah, I am. 
Tell me about that. And part, well, part of it is that there's two ways of looking at the integral movement, if you will. Mm -hmm. One is, you know, the lineage of what you're talking about and Ken, mm -hmm. Ken Wilber's teachings, and he brought us together and we did the integral seminars. And I think that's extremely significant. Those were wonderful times. And the fragrant yeah. is a wonderful way of describing it. And the yeah. fruits of that continue. Uh, and it's there's all kinds of different flavors now. There's the meta modern. There's the perspective. There's, there's, there's you know all of that. And uh, and and we're in the game with each other in terms mm -hmm. of critiquing and and convening and that sort of thing. So I I think that's growing just fine. You know mm -hmm. that's one I thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is de facto integral consciousness, whether or not you've ever heard. Yeah. Of Right. Yeah. You know, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And how, you know, mm -hmm. it manifests in a lot of my friends, even that they're more and more bored with the MSNBC and Fox yeah. News kind of, you know, that that uh, that whole thing. You know, yeah. it's just they're bored with it. And there's a lot of people who are. They're look, they're feel politically homeless. They know there's something more. They know there's something in everything. They're just tired of the arguments and the straw manning. You know, yeah. they're ready to steal man. Yeah. And that's a de facto right. integral move in the yeah. culture. And mm -hmm. I think that's happening, uh, you know, in almost uh, jaw dropping pace. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah, right? it's true. You're, you're absolutely right to make the distinction between the kind of integral the psychodynamic or, or psychoactive education, if you will. Yeah. And integral consciousness, the emergence of integral consciousness that simply can do both and. Yeah, That's what we've been exactly. talking about. It's yeah. not either or, you yeah. know, it's not one well, it, up, one down, you know. Right. And that's one of the things that it's sort of the how, how the, these the, the, the two um, definitions of integral, if you will, uh, intertwingle mm -hmm. is that. It, it, as integral teachers, our job isn't to teach integral to people. You don't go into these programs and teach people integral theory. No, I mean, the, a little bit. Little a bit. little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Sure. Uh, but what is, uh, and it, it, I think it's true of you and me both, is that when you have a de facto integral consciousness, then when you hear about integral philosophy and theory and, and, and you know, the, the integral maps and so forth, they just make sense. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's how I see my work is I'm not trying mm -hmm. to convince anybody. I'm not arguing with anybody. Yeah. I'm just, if you get this, then great. This yeah. is, let's explore yeah. it together. Yeah. You can't persuade anybody yeah. of it. No. Yeah. They, you either, you can, again, you get that scent and you're like, oh yeah, yeah there's freedom there. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I would also maybe point out that that's been true of every stage of development. Mm -hmm. I, I, if I think of myself when I, sort of committed myself to Jesus at age eight. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's good. like everything lit up. Yeah. And then when I got scientific and dropped all that, it's felt that was freedom. That felt like a new freedom. Yeah. You know, yeah. modernity and yeah. rationality and yeah. figuring it out. And then coming to Boulder and, you know, getting the whole counterculture, Buddhist, hippie, dippy. Yeah, because when we were young, freedom. we were young, we were actually getting all that, that really fresh, pluralistic, yeah. you know, it wasn't in the mainstream at all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. delicious, I, I ate it up, you know, mm -hmm. and then integral, it's just another, it's the next stage, but yeah. it too is psychoactive. It's a whole new world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, how great is that? Incredible. The world's to come. Yeah. You know, this isn't the end. Yeah. The idea that it's just kind of in, built into the hard drive and that our consciousness just continues to evolve is kind of amazing because it yeah. is true. Well, that was really fun. I appreciate your, it so love much. Love your work. Love yeah. you, honey. Love you, honey. Take care. Be in touch with